Ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is introduce you to your uh, first speaker, someone I introduced to you a little bit. Uh, he is the chairman of the Granite State Patriots Liberty PAC, the person that helped put this together. He's going to talk a little bit about that PAC. He is a Marine. You notice how I never say he's a former Marine? He's just an old Marine. <laughs> but what he is, is a new patriot. And that's what we need in this country. New patriots to go forth and help us take it back. Ladies and gentlemen, big round of applause for Jerry DeLemus. Not bad for an Army guy. Well, there's a few things I'd, I'd like to do first. Uh, well, actually, there are a lot of things I'd like to do first. I've already welcomed you, and it warms my heart to see all of you here. Uh, Diane Bitter, I, I really want to acknowledge her uh, first off. She and Mona Peralta have just been aces to all the volunteers here. Are just the best. There, this movement, the, the PAC, is, is uh, an umbrella group for all the liberty groups in New Hampshire that, uh, that join, even the individuals that join. Because what I, what I saw that we were lacking in New Hampshire was one straight, delivered, loud voice. And, uh, and, and I, I decided when Jack Kimball asked me to take over the PAC to uh, just use this pack really as a speaker to uh, to bring your voices to Concord, to bring your voices to Washington D.C. and around the globe. Now we know that uh, unfortunately we, a lot of the media doesn't cover a lot of the Liberty Group events, so your voices are even that much more important when you talk to your neighbors, the people at the gas pumps, people in the grocery stores, to share your stories, share your concerns, and and educate because that's that's a key part of this whole movement is education and I would really ask that, uh, that uh, if you haven't been, uh, if you haven't found your voice yet, please do. The, uh, the PAC, when, uh, when Jack formed it up, uh, was more of a well, alignment through his campaign, but uh, when I took it over and I decided to uh, put it into an umbrella group for the Liberty Groups, all the Liberty Groups that joined the PAC, and there are a number of them here as well, uh, they'll send an advisor to the uh, to the PAC, and because the PAC, and so we can have their input. Those those Liberty Groups still remain uh, uh, sovereign; they run themselves, but the PAC will aid them in all that they do. Anything that they need help with, we'll do. We're also going to uh, endorse candidates, maybe more than one for a position, if we, if we can't make up our minds through the advisory committee. But it's time that we just really made our voices heard. And this PAC is a definite vehicle for that. We've got some great speakers here, as Jeff is going to introduce later. So why are we here? Why do we do whatever we do? Do we do it for ourselves? No. No. Let's really be very honest about why we do it. We do it for our kids and our grandchildren. Many of you have seen me speak before, know that every time I end up in front of you, something is happening in my life as it happens every time. Last year, when we gathered together in Portsmouth for that tea party, that was cold then. And, but the weather was nice and the Patriots were great. Many of you remember that when I stood on that stage, I wasn't supposed to be there. I wasn't supposed to be there because my mother was dying of cancer. And on that day, she knew April 15th. And as I sat by her bed, she goes, why are you here? you need to be there and she told me to go she said you need to go to that tea party even if you're in that crowd and I did and it was heartwarming and it was a wonderful story to tell my mother how many of you showed up on that day not for her not for me not for yourselves but for our kids and our grandchildren because it's all we've got and this next individual, individual I'm going to introduce you to decided to run for Congress last year. And he didn't look in the mirror and said, I need to run for Congress for myself. He looked at the pictures on his wall. And he looked at his five lovely children and his brave wife and said, I need to do this for them. And he put himself out there like many of the candidates did. And whether he wins or loses, it is the cause that makes us the victor. It is the cause that makes us the victor. History is not written by the winners. 
history is written by the heroes and many names are left unsaid but they're heroes and the same you put yourself out there you're a hero ladies and gentlemen a big round of applause for rich asher Hello, everybody. And Jerry and Jeff, thank you so much. That's Liberty's J team, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and Jeff, what you just heard, that's the voice of Radio Free Liberty in New Hampshire. And I want to thank Jeff for the messages that he puts out. And Jerry, Jerry's the fist of Liberty here in New Hampshire. And I, I'm so grateful to be with you. There's so many things we could all be doing on a Saturday, as my wife is probably texting me right now. And it's so great that we could be here together because the fight continues. And speaking of radio, Jeff and, and, uh, and the magic he works on radio. So there's this great song. You hear it sometimes right around tax day. Uh, and it was written uh, by George Harrison and the Beatles. Sing it. Early, early 60s, right? Right about the time our current president was born. And, uh, and this song, I think, foreshadowed his coming. And everyone know the song I'm talking about? Tax Man. Yeah. Remember the words? All right? Oh, let, me, let me help you. If you drive a car, I'll tax the street. If you get too cold, I'll tax the heat. Very good. If you take a walk, I'll tax your if you want to sit, I'll tax your... Was that telling or what? Was that predicting the current president? Let's look at the record. Let's look at the record. Cash for clunkers. If you drive a car, I'll, ta if you, I'll tax the street. No. What he'll do is take money from everybody in this room and give it to the one person that drives the car that he thinks you should be driving. Even worse. Right? Yeah. Cap and trade, which is cap and tax. If that's not a tax on heat, I have yet to see one. This is what we have. We have a tax man for a president. This is why we're here together. We're going to change things. Yeah. We are going to change things. Now, it's time to talk about the federal deficit, right? And our tax man of a president has decided he needs to talk about it. And he even said something this week. What he said in talking about the federal deficit was, and I'm quoting, it's not just about cuts in spending. It's about the kind of future we want to have. Wrong. It's about cuts in spending. And we will take care of the future. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I don't need the president to tell me what kind of future I should have, what kind of future my children should have. What I need him to do is get out of the way, sit down, tax the seat, sit down. We'll take care of the blessings of liberty. We don't need him to give them to us. Yet that's what he has been all about. So he wants to talk about the deficit. What did he do? Well, in 2008, he did nothing. In 2009, he formed a commission. In 2010, he wanted to have a conversation. And now he wants to compromise. Well, it's not about commissions, compromise, conversations. It's about cuts. And he doesn't know that. We need to show him. He loves to be thought of as a basketball player, but I've never seen anyone pivot, double dribble, and head fake on the budget more than anyone else. So yes, we can think of him as a basketball player. We have some work to do. Next month, the limit on our credit cards run out. We're going to have a fight over the debt ceiling. Did you know that this president, who's now saying we cannot oppose an increase in the debt ceiling, voted against increasing the debt ceiling himself? Of course you know that, because you can see right through the veneer that this president puts forward, especially on budget issues. We need some things. We need some things before we start holding votes on debt limit. Because if you really want to balance the budget, what do you need to do? Repeal Obamacare. 
You can't balance a budget unless you do that. What else do you need to do? You need to once and for all reform this tax code, scrap it, and replace it with something fairer, fewer, and flatter. Yeah. Yeah. We can do it. New Hampshire has always led. We will lead again. There's another Beatles song, and I'll leave you with this one to rattle around in your head, that I think also foreshadows him. Not tax man. Nowhere man. Our job here is to turn him from the tax man to the nowhere man and send him sitting in his nowhere place making nowhere plans for nobody and then we will ensure our own future for ourselves and our children. I'm happy to be with you today. I'm so grateful for all the work you've done and thankful for all the work you're going to do and I hope I can help you do it. Thank you.